So taking a look at task 9.5, digit manipulation for calling and called party transformations and iOS dial peers. We're told to ensure that calls leave for the PSTN, or as they leave, they're properly formatted so that the PSTN will route each call without error. For call-led party transformation, or for call-led party at all sites, the PSTN should see the DNS digits as dialed with the exception of the prefixed PSTN trunk code. That should be stri stripped prior to PSTN routing. For calling party number at all sites, the PSTN should see the calling party's number as below. US site IP phone, so that's corporate headquarter and branch one, should show their entire external phone number mask for all calls except for international calls where they should prefix their country code to their external phone number mask. Okay? And actually, I believe prior module look here real quick. Yeah, these are actually not set up the one thing I forgot to do in the startup configs, I will amend the startup configs uh, before you live use them if you're watching this recorded. They've already been updated. Let's use the bat tool to update lines. Here's a quick, quick walkthrough in updating external phone number masks from the bulk administration tool. Directory number begins with three, that's my site, uh, branch two, and that's the Netherlands site. So I know that for external phone number mask, for this task, I want it to be uh, 020. Use Zero, although zero two zero would probably be a little bit better way of writing it, and we could certainly deal with that. Two zero seven zero three x x x x, and we actually have to do capital X's. If I do lowercase, yell at me because it's not a proper X; it has to be uppercase. Some places like patterns, it will convert them. Other places, it will not. Uh, 020 is typically referred to as the area code there. Um, technically, actually, for both London and Amsterdam, although they're different countries, uh, just so happens to be. And we would typically get rid of the zero. But I don't think in the task I actually mentioned getting rid of the zero. I think I should have said showing their entire external phone number mask for national calls. And the country code should be prefixed for the external mask for international. I'm actually going to say that country code should be prefixed to external phone number mask minus the preceding zero. So I'm going to amend that. So I am going to include that because I'd like to get that in calling party transformation. We'll run this immediately. Uh, we don't need to update the line or I mean uh, restart the phone. Look for directory numbers beginning with two. These are in Austin, Texas, and the U.S. So these have the external phone number mask of 512-603-XXX, which takes their existing directory number or extension, if you want to call it that. Pre-populates that down. And our 1000 series numbers are in Seattle. So our external phone number mask is going to be 206-501-X. Again, if you're watching this recorded, this is not a task that you have to perform. Uh, this is something that I just forgot to do in live class, but it will go ahead and be part of your startup configurations. Okay, so as we continue reading, for calling party number at all sites, PSTN should see US site phones should show their entire external phone number mask, which is just 10 digits, 
except for international calls where they should prefix their country code, which we noted before in the overall guidelines was one, prefix that to their external phone number mask. Netherlands sites phones should show seven of their external phone number mask digits for emergency and local, their entire number mask for national calls, and the country code prefix to their external phone number mask with the omission, I'm going to add this in later, with the omission of the preceding zero that's already a part of their external phone number mask. That doesn't fall us into proper E164 dialing terms, even though within the country that's how you would refer to your number. Okay, and then for corporate headquarter and branch two sites, perform all digit manipulation for both calling and call lead party exclusively in CUCM. And then for the branch one site, corporate headquarters is a SIP trunk, which a lot of times we would do on the trunk, but I don't want to uh, set, uh, effectively be repetitive. We're gonna do it on branch one. We're gonna perform all calling and call party calling party digit manipulation in CUCM, but called party digit manipulation in the branch one router two iOS H323 gateway. Again, we would typically do this on a SIP trunk as well, call ed, drop the nine in the actual trunk or gateway, but uh, the way I have it set up with the startup configs, it will route the call just fine. Okay, so we'll get to the Now, one thing we weren't told to do was to only uh, <clears throat> do this at the gateways. Okay, so we very well could do our digit manipulation at the route pattern or route list details level as well. Remember, we said that the gateway digit manipulation, that's the called and calling party transformation CSS, that trumps anything that's done at the route list details, and the route list details trumps anything that is done in terms of digit manipulation at the route pattern. But if we only do it at the route pattern and not anywhere else on down the line, then we don't have to, uh, then that's just fine. It will continue to take effect as long as it's not usurped later on. So, we will actually go ahead and do everything at the gateway using calling and call ed party transformation CSSs. And the reason is mainly that I'd like you to become familiar with how those work. Okay? If we go back to the route pattern level, and we don't have to do anything on translation patterns because those are only for blocking, but if we do something at the route pattern level, remember I mentioned that so here's our route pattern portion up here. Pattern definition, where it should route to, etc. But if we scroll down, remember I mentioned that we've always had calling party transformations and call led party transformations. They've just the actual transformation has been there on the page for both patterns. patterns or route list details, okay, we still have calling and call led, they're just the actual transformations are done there on the page. The big difference is that when we deal with gateways or trunks, Scroll down, scroll button to work here, that here we have call led party transformation CSS and calling party transformation CSS. Notice that this is a part of the subsection for outbound call routing only. There is a calling search space up here, but if we click erase and scroll up to see what it is a part of, we see that this calling search space is only used for inbound calls. 
okay, only used for inbound calls. So that has nothing to do with what we're trying to do here. We're trying to do digit manipulation, and that always takes effect on the egress, and that's going to be a part of outbound calls. So we have to create new calling search spaces, or, C, or search spaces, and then we'll create our partitions and our patterns. So let's go ahead and let's create a, new, a series of new partitions and patterns. We'll create some new patterns. These we'll call, let's go with the naming convention of uh, partition underscore X form, because transformation is a lot to write out, so X form. Uh, X late we'll typically use for translation patterns, and we know that translation patterns only ultimately transform, but for transformation patterns we'll use X form. So what the function of it is. So first of all, naming to say what it is, it's a partition. What it does, it transforms, and who it transforms for. So let's say the corporate headquarter gateway, because it could be corporate headquarter phone, and then something like, let's say, uh, DNS for dialed number information service, or essentially the call led number. Rather than writing out call led number, or we could we could say something like call led, or even call led party transformation pattern. That's another way that that will be written down. Okay, actually, that's not a bad way. It shortens it a little bit. Let's use partition call led party transformation, and we'll distinguish call led from calling uh, with this right here. So CN will be calling and CD will be call ed. And the reason I'm using this is actually these are the, um, and I put PT rather than uh, called, yeah, called party transformation pattern. There we go. That is actually the naming convention or the abbreviation that Cisco uses for called party transformation pattern and calling party, or sometimes I write it like that. Okay, so we'll, we'll stick with the one that they use. Actually, I should have while I was in there. Oops. Partition for calling. We'll just go ahead and write out calling. <clears throat> Headquarter gateway. One. Call led. Both of those for two as well. We'll create our calling search spaces, one for each of those partitions. Okay, copy this, CSS for call ed party for branch one. Doing a one for one mapping here. Led party for branch two. Ling party, branch two. Ling party for headquarters gateway. Copy and call led. Corporate headquarters gateway. By the way, I will be providing all of this information to you guys in uh, 
probably put them in a uh, XLS file, but I'll also publish them in PDF for anyone who might not have access to XLS or Excel, but I probably pretty rare with uh, Google and others open office giving it to you for free. So an XLS so that you have a complete listing of every partition that we've created, what calling search base it's in as a part of, and uh, as well as dial plans and everything else so you can follow along. Not just, you'll also have the tarball uh, CSV file as the export from CUCM, from bulk administration, so that you can import it into your own or our racks, whichever, and work with it that way. You can actually navigate through everything, but then also just an XLS so that you can see it in an easy to read, left to right fashion. Okay, so we've got call led for all three and calling for all three. If we were smart, we'd probably jump into each and every one. Just make sure that it's a one for one mapping. Two branch two calling, branch one, branch one calling. Headquarter, headquarter, call ed, branch two, branch two, call ed, branch one, branch one, call ed. Okay, good. Got the one for one creation of CSSs and partitions. So now we need to go apply those. So here we are at branch one. Give that a. Gateway. Outbound calls. Note that use device pool is on by default. This may become relevant or necessary at some point in our uh, modules, but for right now, for today and tomorrow, we're going to leave it off for everything that we look at just because I'd rather not have to switch to another screen. The, the, the less screens that we can switch to, uh, probably the better and the less confusing that it will be for those watching. There will come a time when we deal with things like device mobility where it will become important to use a, a device pool, not really for gateways, but for phones. But for now, we'll leave those unchecked, or actually we'll uncheck them because the default would actually be to have them checked. Call led party transformation, we're on branch one. Call led party, CD, and then call ling party, CNG, and again for branch gateways, creating these for phones tomorrow when we look at localization. <coughs> Update was successful. We'll go back. Here's our branch two gateway. So we'll scroll down. This is call led. So let's choose the right one. And then calling two. I was going to name them Dinas and, and A and I, but I think that uh, according to Cisco's convention might go ahead and actually jump back out and reset all of these gateways at once. We will have to do a let's do We'll have to do a no MGCP, MGCP on the branch two. We'll go to our SIP trunk. There's the default, so we'll uncheck those. And we'll choose all lead for corporate headquarters and call Ling for corporate headquarters. Save. We'll reset. Okay, we will jump back out to our branch two router three gateway. Do no MGCP. C. Status, multiple frames established, so CCM, registered with backhaul, good. 
Okay, so now we set up the infrastructure and assigned it, the CSS and the partitions for the transformations, and assigned them to the gateways and trunks, respectively. <clears throat> but now we need to actually set up the transformations themselves. So now we need to go over to call routing. New to 7.0 is transformation pattern, calling and call ed. First of all, let's go to call ed. Now we weren't given anything too terribly difficult in terms of requirements for call ed party transformations. Simply that the PSTN should see the DNS digits as dialed with the exception of the trunk code. Okay, so that's uh, the exception of the nine for the corporate uh, headquarter, well actually for both US sites, and corporate headquarter and branch one, and then with the exception of the zero, initial zero trunk code, as the branch two Netherlands code, right? But we were told that for corporate headquarter and branch two, perform all digit manipulation for calling and call led exclusively in CUCM, <clears throat> but then for branch one, calling party should be in CCM, but call led party should be in the actual gateway. Okay, so there's a reason we did this so we can talk about dial peers and basic digit manipulation within dial peers. We'll get into more advanced digit manipulation in a day. So corporate headquarters, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual corporate headquarter uh, setup here. So we know that MGCP isn't enabled, so we know it has to have dial peers. And go run begin with dial dash peer. We know that it's a SIP trunk. So we have, and if you remember from our gateway discussion, every gateway, whether that's CUCM, whether that's an iOS, SIP, or H323 gateway, every gateway has two dial peers or two call legs to every call, the inbound and the outbound. Just depends on which way the call is coming. Is the call coming from the PSTN? In that case, this is our inbound dial peer from the PSTN. That's the only time it ever takes effect. Matches all calls and it sends the calls on to the digit analysis engine, direct inward dial versus playing secondary dial tone. Then outbound, DOIP, and we set this up during the gateway, gateway module, those go out to our sub and our pub primarily and secondarily, right? Because calls come in as 10 digits. We identified that in the actual gateway module, and they haven't changed. The PSTN hasn't changed since then. But here we have an inbound, uh, sorry, outbound dial peer to the PSTN. So destination pattern matches dot T, so really anything. T is the interdigit timeout, and it sends them out the port 000 colon 23, which is our PRI. Up, actually, show ISDN status. Looks like 000 colon 23, the B channel, states that uh, we are in multiple frames established. Okay, so where are our inbound dial peers from CUCM? Well, here are SIP dial peers, and depending on what the call link number is, uh, I don't remember if we talked about, but destination pattern matches DNS or call led if the dial peer is being used at the time by iOS as an outbound dial peer. However, if iOS at the time or at any given time selected this dial peer as an inbound dial peer, then destination pattern does not match call led number, it matches call ling. Doesn't match DNS, it matches A and I if it's an inbound dial peer. So if that's the way our inbound uh, A&I is looking from CUCM, then it would match this dial peer. But if not, then it may not. It, well, it wouldn't, actually. So that's where we added in the gateway section incoming called number dot, which seems to overlap with this, except for the fact that this is POTS 
Dial Pier 1 is a POT type, and this, both of these that have incoming call number are VOIP types. Considered for the same task. So these will match all inbound calls from the sub, all inbound calls from the pub, and these will take care of inbound calls from the sub or pub into the gateway, and then outbound calls out to the PSTN. So here we see that it's going to route anything we send it to the PSTN. And this is why we we're told to do all digit manipulation for call led, as well as calling, or the headquarter gateway in CUCM. Have to do it for branch two because there are no dial peers for branch two. Were, unless it was CAS, and we talked about that. Actually, there is one left over, I suppose, from. Uh, Uh, from our gatekeeper talk when we were using this as CME. Way show telephony service. Telephony service is not enabled, so when we were using this uh, from the last module of, of uh, gatekeeper and we had CME, that's been disabled. Uh, there was a remaining dial peer, but I've just gone ahead and gotten rid of that. That's no longer there, and even if there were, MGCP has all uh, traffic, if I do show ISDN, not OSDN, but ISDN status, we see that Q931 is backhauled to CCM manager. Okay, so all digit manipulation would have to be done on the CUCM. But if we contrast router 1, which is a SIP trunk with dial peers, to router 2, show run pipe 2 begin with dial dash peer, we still have a few dial peers left over from our gateway module. That is our inbound from the PSTN and our outbound to CUCM or our inbound from CUCM, incoming called number, if the type is VOIP H323, but we have no outbound to the PSTN. We did in the gateway module, but we've gone ahead and gotten rid of that because it's now part of your task. So here's where we will need to uh, match and manipulate outbound data. Now, couldn't we just do it in the same way that we did here on our router one, corporate headquarter, SIP trunk, where we just send everything out to the PSTN, at least match with one dial peer? Oops. Well, we could, except that if we scroll down a little bit more on that task, we said that note, the minimum dial peers for corporate headquarter router one gateway are already provisioned. However, proper full configuration of dial peers for branch one R2 is your responsibility. Configure these on branch one R2 so that if there was an ever a need to support SRST at this site in the future, that dialing would continue to function in the same fashion and as when the CUCM was up with no interdigit with no interdigit timeout necessary to place any call. In the same fashion, bold, this means that we still need to have uh, nine as a dialable number, and then we would have dial uh, secondary dial tone for nine. We would provide that through SRST or else CME as SRST, and we would do that and we will do that later in our high availability module. We're not going to set up the SRST portion right now. We weren't asked to because it said if there was ever a need to support it at the future, that dialing would continue to function in the same way. We are just setting up the dial peers and the dialing. So we are going to go ahead and need to, before we do any sort of digit manipulation on CUCM, set up dial peers and know how to route those calls out branch one R2. So let's go ahead and create dial dash peer voice and we'll start at 10, I believe 1 was our POTS dial peer for inbound. 100 began our VOIPs. So 10 will begin our POTS outbound dial peers. We'll say that destination pattern should match 9911. Now, a couple things. With destination patterns in iOS, we can use regular expressions. We'll get more into regular expressions when we talk about voice translation rules. For now, we'll cover a few basics. 
such as caret is the beginning of a literal string, and dollar sign is the end of a literal string. I'm actually not going to include carrots in the beginning of every one. I will include the dollar sign. And actually, you should note that if you are setting up SRST or CME, that iOS automatically puts a dollar sign at the end of every ePhone DN. And we talked the other day about how ePhone DNs actually are used by iOS simply as a template with which to create POTS dial peers. Okay, so we're essentially saying when we set incoming called number earlier and dot here, remember that I mentioned it matched any number, uh, a a a any number that would come in as an inbound call ed or DNS number. But why? What if the number was 15 digits long? Unless I said incoming called number dot dollar sign, if I said dot dollar sign, then I'm matching exactly one character. Because I say dot, I am matching one character. However, I haven't limited it to only one digit. So it can be any number of digits. So in the same way, destination pattern 9911 would match 9911555, 3, you know, whatever I want. It probably wouldn't dial that way, but it could. This is the reason for the dialer sign. Okay, so we would also need to set up one for 911 as well. So we'll need to have a port, D channel, we're referencing our PRI that we send it out. And now we need to deal with digit manipulation in iOS. By default, there is something called digit strip applied to every dial peer. If I do show run, type to section dial dash peer, uh, voice 10, notice that I just entered digit strip and hit enter, but it doesn't show up. That's because it's the default. Digit strip automatically strips any digits that were explicitly matched. So if I wanted to forward 911 onto the PSTN, if I said no digit strip, it wouldn't strip any of them. And then it would forward 9911, which the PSTN would not route. So I have other digit manipulation mechanisms, such as forward digits. I can forward digits all. I can actually forward extra digits. Or I can forward digits from the number of the right justified dialed digits. Okay, what does that mean? So from the right, so if I say forward digits three, dollar sign is a regular expression, it's not actually a digit. Forward three digits from the right, or the most significant, to the left. That would be essentially what I'd want. Okay, so forward digits three, port number, destination pattern, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and add uh, 11. We'll say for here, the destination pattern is going to be uh, 911 dollar sign. And we'll either have four digits three, or here we could do We'll switch it up here. We'll sit here. We'll say no digit strip, and then we'll say, of course, the same port number. We'll have our dial peer number 12 pots. Destination pattern will be. Let's copy from our patterns here. Now, of course, these. X's aren't going to be used here. It doesn't like those. Instead, it likes dots. So it also doesn't really, let's see, we have nine. And we don't have a dot here. Well, we do, but that's a digit in iOS. 
In CUCM, it's a delimiter. In iOS, it's actually a digit. So instead, we don't really have a delimiter with which to strip. We use other mechanisms. So 9, 2 through 9, dot, dot, 9, or sorry, then 2 through 9, dot, dot, and dot, 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 dot. So that's our local number. Oops, let's add our dollar sign. Still use the same port. Now by default, since the explicitly matched digits are stripped, we don't have to do anything here. This is not an explicitly matched digit. That is a wild card. So are these. So are these. So technically, we're not going to do anything here. We're actually just going to leave this. Show run. Type to section dial peer. Let's do begin with dial peer 10. So we're demonstrating different types of digit manipulation. Somewhere we're using forward digits, some where we, we are using no digit strip, and some where we're letting the default, which is digit strip, take place and strip explicitly matched digits. We'll make sure that these are the dial peers that are being matched on the egress as we do our testing. And again, this is for call led party. Okay, so now we need Another dial peer for long distance. We just add a one. Port. And here we actually will need to specify a number of digits to forward on. But let's actually look at another form of digit manipulation. Let's just allow digit strip to do its job and strip explicitly matched digits, which will be these two. And instead, here we'll use prefix. Well, you know what? We're actually going to use prefix on the next one. We'll use it here as well. We'll prefix this one back in. I'm not saying this is necessarily the best uh, habits to use. I just want to demonstrate various different types of call led party digit manipulation. Okay, finally, set up our last dial peer, and this is going to be for the destination pattern of 9011. Capital T for timeout. Interdigit timeout. Have prefix 011 because we need that. We can't do forward digits three because there are more digits to follow. Note we don't have a dollar sign on this one. We're not saying the end of a literal string. We don't know how many more digits, so we can't really say forward a certain number of digits. We also can't say no digit strip because then we'd send the PSTN. Uh, PBX access code and the PSTN will reject that call. The only thing we can do here is prefix unless we got into something a little more complex which isn't necessary here such as a translation or voice translation rule but we'll be covering that in the next module so we won't go over it here. And we of course need our port. Okay let's look at our dial peers. We've got our 9911, our 911, our local, our long distance, and our international. What about the one international with uh, interdigit timeout, the hash value? In iOS, it's actually not necessary to enter that, provided that, let's go back into config T, if I do dial peer question mark, I've got this command or argument called terminator. Okay, so terminator, then I can have any DTMF digit, 0 through 9, A through F, star through hash. 
Okay, so before I enter the command, let's do show run type to include terminator. It doesn't show up. So whatever is the default is obviously what doesn't show up. So let's change it. Let's say dial peer terminator asterisk and now do show run. Okay, now we see that actually show up in iOS. We've changed it. So what was the default? Well, I can already tell you it was hash. And if we do show run again, now that we've changed it back to the default, it doesn't show up anymore. So hash is already the terminator for interdigit timeout for dial peers. Because of that, we don't need to explicitly enter it unless, of course, someone had changed the default terminator. So we'll write that configuration, and we're ready to send call lead party transformation, or actually call lead party numbers with the preceding PBX PSTN trunk code of 9 out to the branch 1H323 gateway and allow it via its dial peers to take care of any call lead party digit manipulation. Okay, so now back to CUCM. So now we're back at CUCM under call routing, transformation, call lead party transformation patterns. We don't have any. We're going to set some up. First of all, let's know who we're setting it up for. We're going to be setting up call lead party for, not for branch one, because we've already done that in iOS. So we'll be sending those calls as, as are, as is. We actually won't be setting up any called party transformations here. That's not to say you cannot do call lead party transformations in iOS and then also do them in the gateway. In fact, tomorrow, We'll be looking at just that. But for now, for this lab and set of tasks, we should not do any because we were instructed not to. So we only set up the CSS and partitions as a good infrastructure for the future. We could have omitted those. We will set up call lead party for corporate headquarters. Corporate headquarters is in the US. The US route patterns for call lead or DNS begin with a nine. Or a trunk code. So let's do nine dot bang. And then let's notice discard digits right here is grayed out. Actually, as soon as I uh, went off of there, it wasn't. That was because of this here. Let me just get rid of that. Okay. So discard digits is grayed out. That's because until I actually have a discard digit, I just got rid of mine. Dot, notice when I tab off of this, now discard digits becomes available. Okay, I only point that out in case you panic and don't see it as a drop down able HTML box. Now we've got a lot of discard digits. All the 1010, 1110, uh, 1010 dialing are what called US PIC codes based on the North American numbering plan. 11-10 arrow 7D, okay? That is 11 or 10 digits down to 7 digits. There's a lot of options we can use here. Many of them get into the numbering plan. So, uh, for instance, if I have the at symbol, to call into play a numbering plan and route filters, that's where I get pre-at rather than my other option, which is pre-dot. I also have things like pre-dot trailing pound or pre-dot trailing hash. Now, I want to point out a service parameter. Control F find that I'm going to do is based on hash. And the first thing it comes to is a cluster-wide parameter for device general, so phones and gateways, and everything really, that strips the hash sign from the called party number. Click on context-sensitive help. This parameter enables the stripping of the hash sign digits 
from called party information elements for inbound, outbound, Q931, H25 setup. Okay? True is the default. So this is actually, uh, it doesn't say it here. I thought it did. It's going to strip hash if it's the ending character. If this is a nor, if this is a beginning character, um, well, actually, it, it depends. If we're sending it out to a gateway or H323, then it's going to deal. If it's an internal DN, then hash is perfectly fine to be used. We might want to send hash out to, let's say, some sort of H323 trunk or uh, iOS gateway or something. So we can change this to false. It's also possible default is true. It's also possible that for inherent troubleshooting, this would be a perfect place that a proctor could strip that off or, or change the default configuration to false. One more reason why in your lab you may want to set service parameters to default, but then again you might want to read your lab first. Sometimes they actually pre-configure things to help you. Okay, I, I think I've told this before, but I remember uh, my security exam. I went in, found some pre-configuration, thought it was inherent troubleshooting, stripped it out and later realized it was actually quite necessary and I had broken something and now I needed to fix it and go put it back in. And that's one more argument for backing up and saving all of your base configurations before making any changes. At least in, well even in CUCM you can export your entire uh, configuration service parameters and all. Okay, so we'll leave this as strip true. Actually, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll change it to false. The reason we'll do that is we'll show that using the discard digit of pre-dot trailing hash explicitly gets rid of a hash symbol if it's the last digit, the trailing digit, and can be used even if we don't necessarily have a hash symbol as part of our pattern. It's still going to strip pre-dot, it's just going to only strip trailing hash if that trailing hash happens to be there. Okay, so service parameters, let's just check to make sure this is updated. Strip sign is set to false, update was successful, good, we'll close this window. So we're actually going to make it a habit, and I would say probably a best practice, to leave your discard digits as pre-dot trailing hash. Now notice this is for call-ed party transformations only. And for this lab, we're not going to be doing anything else in terms of masks or prefix digits for call-ed. In tomorrow's lab, or the next lab, Module 10, we'll see uh, quite a bit of additional changes. And we'll save this again because add not successful, there it is. Okay, now this is for corporate headquarters. So we will deal with that. And actually, what could we do here? Instead of doing 9.911, we could just say 9.bang, couldn't we? That would take care of all patterns. Now wait a minute, urgent priority is checked and grayed out. We can't do anything about it. It's going to be urgent priority. So wait a minute, as soon as one digit matches this bang or exclamation, it will immediately route because urgent priority is checked, right? Well, not really. This gets into another very brief discussion about two different types of calls or two different types of uh, ways of sending calls in CUCM, in gateways, H323, ISDN. Okay? One is called overlap sending. <clears throat> and the other way is called N block. Overlap sending sends digits one at a time. This is the way skinny phones send digits by default back to CUCM. As we saw by the traces earlier, 
even though the trace wasn't updated for my call, uh, the trace is earlier in the slides. So when a skinny phone sends a call or let's say even when we're you know, dialing from CUC, typically when skinny phones send calls, SIP phones, if they're using something called KPML, so skinny phones use this, uh, SIP phones if using KPML, keypad or keypress, whichever you want to call it, markup language, form of XML. Um, ISDN can use this, H323 can, we typically don't, but we can. And overlap sending says send one digit at a time, so one, and then send that digit. Two, and then send that digit. Or, you know, let's make it relevant to what we're doing here. Nine, send the digit. Nine, send the digit. One, send the digit. One, send the digit. There. Okay, so that's how the phone sends the digit to PM. One digit at a time. That's overlap sending. And block is done differently. And block, make this a different color says send all the digits at once. Send all of them at once to whatever the next entity is. CUCM, when it's sending a call from, let's say, uh, your phone has already sent the call via skinny to CUCM, and now CUCM is sending the call, sending the DNS or call ed information elements from, you know, let's say through the path. So uh, from the route pattern to the route list, to the route group, to the gateway, and that calls into play call lead party transformation patterns before it transforms and sends it back out to the actual PSTN. All of those are being sent via and block. Okay, and block is the way that those are being sent. That's the reason that urgent priority must be checked. Otherwise, we would have to wait for interdigit timeout, not because the user dialed a digit and we didn't have it checked properly, but because called party transformation is trying to transform the number, and we're sitting here waiting on this bang, this exclamation to wait to get all of the digits before we decide, okay, we can go ahead and transform it to drop the pre-dot and send it. Urgent priority says, hey, as soon as we have enough digits, and we have enough digits because we sent all of them at the same time, then go ahead and route that call. We'll see urgent priority as an absolute necessity tomorrow. Uh, today we're seeing it for calling and called party transformations and that's fine, but we can't change it. Tomorrow we're going to see it as an absolute necessity uh, just in terms of in terms of something else that we're going to get into um, dealing with translation patterns. Okay, so this is actually fine for all but one of our US patterns. <clears throat> that is the nine dot zero one one bang hash. So we'll need a copy of that. Let's take two minutes. And note that these two are only for the corporate headquarter gateway. There might be a time when we want to manipulate all the gateways at the same time, uh, but we were told just to do corporate headquarter and branch two in CUCM and branch one in iOS. Tomorrow we'll look at what's the best practice with where to do the digit manipulation. Okay, so we're also going to need 
the zero dot branch to call ed party. We'll still pre dot trailing pound and first and a zero dot hash. Oh, I modified it. Okay, so let's take a look. Nine dot bang, nine dot bang hash, both in corporate headquarter call ed party partitions. Zero dot bang, zero dot bang hash in branch two. Okay, so we should be good on call led party. We did branch one in the iOS gateway. And for call ling, we have to set those up. We were told US phones should show their entire external phone number mask for all calls except international where they should prefix their country code. All right, so let's look at transformation pattern call ling. We currently have none. Create a new one. Now this pattern that we have to match, we actually just go back and take a look. Well, I'll just draw it here rather than, if we remember the route pattern had X form or transforms happen there on the page, right? That pointed to the route list, which has the route groups. So route list details was the place where we could, kind of somewhere in between, somewhere where we could do X form. Again, the manipulation for call ed and call ling was there on the page. Then that pointed to our gateways or trunks where we don't have X form there on the page, we have X form CSS, and that's where we're coming up to here for either A and I calling or call ed party based on the partition. Calling party, let's say for corporate headquarters. So if we want to match call ling party for corporate headquarters, we need to, we need to match it, we need to match the call ling party or the A and I of the original calling party as that calling party entered into the route pattern. So what did that calling party look like? Well, for corporate headquarters, it looked like 1001, or actually 1XXX, right? That's what it looked like. 1XXX, yeah? Everyone agree? What about those who say, well, wait a minute. We had an external phone number mask applied of 206501 1XXX. Okay, that's true, but the calling party trans, uh, sorry, the external phone number mask is not taken into account until we actually tell it to be. Where do we tell it to be? You might remember that under route pattern, for any route pattern that we deal with, let's go to just 911, we have use calling party's external phone number mask, right? But remember, that's a subsection of calling party transformation. So it's actually the transformation that's telling it to use that. So we could check this here, but remember that the route pattern, we're doing transform here, that's gonna be overridden by routeless details transform and gateway trunk transformations. We're using gateway trunk transformations. So this done here won't really net us anything because it will be overridden. Go back to this page, we note that on this page also have use calling parties external phone number mask and so we can check that here. But first our pattern has to reference 
the number as it entered into the actual route pattern. So our pattern for 1000 series corporate headquarters will be 1XXX. And then we will say use calling party's external phone number mask. Now, this presents us with an issue, doesn't it? Go back and take a look at something else. This said that US site sh phones should show their enti uh, entire external phone number mask for all calls except for international calls where they should prefix their country code of one to the external phone number mask. Now wait a minute, this here matches all corporate headquarter A and I calling party DNs, but it's not specific to the type of call led party. So this is just matching all calling party numbers, period. I mean, all calling party numbers from corporate headquarters, 1001, 1002, 1003, et cetera. It's not matching 1001 or 1002 or 1003 if they're dialing internationally or if they're dialing 911 or if they're dialing long distance or if they're dialing local. So it's not matching the calling number as it pertains to the dial digits. In fact, there's no place down here to do that. It doesn't work that way. It's not actually a combination. You might say, okay, we'll go back to the SIP trunk, right? So go back to the SIP trunk, scroll down to outbound calls, and maybe it's some sort of concatenation or something between call led party, transform CSS, and calling party. That sounds good, but that's not actually the case. And there's nothing else here that allows us to enable that. So, what this means is that we actually cannot use calling party transformation patterns. The only way to make it specific to the dialed number is to go back to route pattern, or let's say 911, and here, if I do calling party transformations, these calling party transformations are specifically relevant to the call led number. So it's only people that call 911 calling party gets modified. So it's calling party specific to the call led party. We can do it on route list details as well. But we actually have to do the calling party digit manipulation here on the route pattern or route list details. We cannot do it with calling party transformation patterns. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. I thought that this trumps this, okay? So trunk transform trumps route list details and route list details trumps or usurps route pattern. Yes, but only if something matches. We Remember we said earlier we can configure a CSS, but if nothing matches, if no pattern matches under calling party transformation pattern or the CSS that's configured, then it doesn't matter. There is no trump because there is no relevant applicable transformation for calling number. And call led and call ling we mentioned were treated independent of one another. So we did our call led party transformation here at the egress gateway, but our call ling we're actually going to do back on the route pattern. And we were told just to present the external phone number mask. So all we'll do is check this checkbox. Click save. back, do this for every out pattern, local, our 9.911. long distance national code our international 
we were told to use the external phone number mask, but prefix to that phone number mask the country code of 1. That for 9011, and then also for 9011 bang hash. Back to our requirements for Netherlands, local calls and emergency should only show seven digits. Although if we go check out the devices themselves, believe that our branch two phones do have 10 digits and those who are watching this recorded, if you're looking at your tasks as well, you'll note that there's additional uh, information here in your task. That's because we went back and changed this to actually say uh, omit that preceding zero part of your E164 number. For local and emergency, this won't really matter because we'll first of all use the calling party's external phone number mask and then off of this number, this is kind of like um, the way this works here, the interaction between this one checkbox and then the rest of this is that first of all have to check the checkbox for use calling party's external phone number mask and what that does is say immediately okay call into play everything that's in that party's external phone number mask in this case um, 020703XXXX so that's going to be like 3001, 3002, 3003, et cetera, for the XXXX. So if we say that, and then we say calling party transform mask of XXX, XXXX, so seven X's. What this does is it says from the right, mask off from the external phone number mask seven digits. So here was the DN. Here was the external phone number mask. Here is the calling party. based on the route pattern. Okay. Transformation, calling party transformation based on the route pattern rather than based on a transformation pattern <clears throat> of seven X's, but also we were told to use, check, use, Okay, so that's what calls into play that. So the net result <clears throat> is that we have the one, and I didn't really draw these in line. Let me draw these a little bit better in line. Net result that passes down is we've got one, zero, zero, three, Zero and seven. So our resulting number, if 3001 was the calling party, is that 703-3001 is what we passed on to the PSTN. But again, it's only if we use calling party's external phone number mask. If we don't, we can still have seven X's, but we're only pulling from the DN, which is four. So in that case, didn't have use calling party's external phone number mask, and we did have seven X's, it would result in 3001 because that's all the more information we're giving it to use to act upon. Got that set up. Back, that was 112. We'll go to local, same thing, XXX, XXXX. Use calling party, save, okay, okay. Zero one one two. Use 
specs is there, pretty populated. And then what were we told for long distance? Told for national, it should use their entire external phone number mask with the zero. Okay, and the country code should prefix, uh, or sorry, for na international calls, we should prefix the country code to the external phone number mask. Again, with dropping, uh, in the updated version, dropping that preceding zero. So for national, just use external phone number mask. Then for international, use external phone number mask, prefix the country code, which we were told in the general guidelines was 3-1, but drop that preceding zero. How can we do that? Well, again, if there was uh, 020-703-3001, we'll just go ahead and say. We want to prefix 31, but we want to drop this zero. Then, oh, hey, we could just do a pre-dot, right? No, wait a minute. That pre-dot is for call-led party. That's a, this is a DNS pattern, a call-led party pattern not call ling, this is call ling. Okay, so that actually won't work. We can't do pre-dot. So instead, what we'll do is a mask. So we'll do a prefix of a 3-1 to a mask of 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 digits from the right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One. Fixing all but the zero. Uh, sorry, we're masking and calling to uh, continue on all but that first zero. Nine of the ten digits, and then prefixing zero. But we have to still use external phone number mask before we can actually call on any of those digits. Okay, same thing here. And don't worry about the calling party number and type, we'll be getting into those tomorrow. Okay, so now we've done everything that we need to do in terms of the actual uh, calling and call ed party. And we will go ahead and configure this last task of private line automatic ring down before we go ahead and test. But we've met the requirements for task five.